All right, folks. Today's Friday. Today's gravel day. I got to get some gravel in so I can uh, continue on this weekend. So I'm just going to head down and pick up some gravel for the project we got going here. Um, yeah, hopefully I can get every, all the gravel in, get it graded out, and then uh, continue on with the framing over the overhang. So uh, I'll take you with me. Thought it'd be kind of interesting to show you the different types of gravel. This is kind of a, this is a pretty small pit here. Um, this is a asphalt manufacturing plant. Most of the stuff they do is is for the uh, asphalt industry. And this stuff here is called uh, reject. It's like five eighths minus down to sand. And you can see that sand in there. They call that reject. This reject pile is all the way down there. This is the coarse end. And all the way down there is the fine end. Probably between five and six tons right there. Depends on the loader, I guess. I've had loads. Okay, I got my gravel in. Now I'm doing the rafter framing. Figured I'd go over a quick tutorial on, on how to do that. Um, first of all, is when you lay your lay your board out, you want to find your crown. So what a crown is in a board, you know, you got a straight board. My finger is a straight board, and a crown will be that. Almost all the boards have a crown on them. They all go like this. So you want the crown up when you put that up, so you got to cut it that way. And really, when you're doing studded walls or whatever, you always want the crowns running the same way. We always go crown up, so we put everything crown up, so everything is the same. If you got crowns, if you just throw them out there on the wall and nail them together, you don't know where the crowns are, you're going to have crown up, crown down, and your wall is going to go like this. Your sheathing and your, your sheetrock, drive your sheetrock are nuts. But, um, and you'd be surprised how many people I've seen do that over the years. Just house after house. It's just the way they do it, I guess. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is my first measurement. I'm gonna pull it. This is gonna be the top of my rafter. I'm just gonna pull the measurement from up there. To here. So hopefully you can see that. So this is the top of my rafter. So I'm just gonna go, my measurement's 223 and a quarter. So I'm just gonna make a mark like that. And I'm gonna show you an old school way to do it and a new school way to do it. Old school. This is before we had speed squares. So what you wanna do is you can make your mark at three and a half. Do the same thing down here. I mean, the old days, this is the way we had to do it. And then we'd straight line it across. If you got a really long tail, you just run a string line. It takes a lot of time, as you'll see when I show you the other way. So then, to get your 312, you put your 3 right there, right about where you want it. Get your 12 up on this side. So you're right at 3, right at 12. And then you make your mark. So that's your plumb cut right there. Now, so I ran that a little bit longer. So I could use that to 90 off of. So a 90 off of 312 is a 12.3. So you come over that way. And my beam is 3 and 9 sixteenths. So I'm going to go to there. And then on that, I'm going to 90 off of that mark. And this is my cut right here. So my cut is gonna go up, over, and over. My beam is gonna be right there. <clears throat> That's basically how you do it. And then at the top, I'll show you how to make that plum cut up there. But what I was getting at on uh, 
when you're figuring your height on your on your beam or your ledger whichever way you're going this is where you're measuring to right here that's where the three and a half inches comes into play so you got your beam here which is 12 inches so if you just got your post up you got your post up and you want to cut those posts off at whatever height you figured out what your height you got to add in this and then you got to add in this three and a half inch now if you're doing a steep pitch like a 12 12 which is a 45 say that say that we're going to make this a 45 it's going to be a 12 12 pitch now when i added my height i have to add about four and seven eighths instead of the three and a half on the 312 so that's that on that and we'll go do this upper one up here and uh, we'll do this with the framing square also just to show you because you know most farmers they they just got a framing square laying around so when you're doing this one you can go off of this side here run your three here run your 12 here i can't even see that Oh, three. Shoot, I hope we can see that in the shadows. And then, there you go. That's with a framing square. So I'll cut those and get those out of the way, and then I'll show you how to do it with a uh, what we call a quick square. And I got a couple of them. I used the bigger one down at this end, so I only have to make one measurement. And I use my small one down at the other end, and I'll show you how I do that. My 22, 2, 2, 3 and a quarter. And I'm going to use my speed square. And this thing, I don't know who ever invented this thing, boy, that, uh, that was the best thing that they ever come up with. Changed my life as a framer. So anyway, this thing has notches on quarter inch increments so you can, you know, whatever you need. So you don't have snap lines or use a straight edge or anything. You can, you can just line them up with that. Um, the pitch, your common pitchers are on the lower bar here. I don't know if you can see that. So these are all your common pitches. So we're doing a 312 right now, which is right here. This is your pivot point up here. These are uh, 45 degree hip and valley pitches. So these are actually, instead of a 312, that would be a 317. So if you were cutting angles on a 45, you know, a hip, you would be using these measurements right here, which is, it's a little bit less of a cut than the actual common. And these things are slick. I mean, whoever thought of these, that was brilliant. So anyway, what you do here, so we got our mark. This is the end of our beam here. And you just put that on three. So you got three there. This is your pivot point. It just fits right tight against the edge of the board. Make your mark. And then you just 90 off of that. And this is where you use your tape measure. You just put that on three and nine sixteenths, make a mark there, and then you 90 again off of that. This angle here is actually, this is a 312, this is a 12 3. 90 off of 312 is a 12 3, and vice versa. So that's our cut there. And then the other end. Is simply a bigger speed square same concept pivot point pitch line okay. now I'm kind of going back and forth I usually don't do this when I'm cutting a bunch of them but for video purposes so bear with me especially you framers out there don't laugh at me
Now you'll notice that I overcut this here, overcut, overcut, and that's so I can get my blade all the way cut through on the bottom. It's the only reason I do that. Um, on stairs, when I'm cutting stairs, you know when you gotta cut stairs out, I don't do that. I just stop at the line and finish it off with a jigsaw. But for rafter framing, that's the way we do it. So that's about all I got for that. Um, that's what it looks like. And what I did here is I uh, I set all my posts. I, so every every rafter is on a post, and I set those. And then I had to straighten out that one glue lamb, or not a glue lamb, it's a pear lamb. I put an brace on it. So now I'm going in and, and cutting all the rest of the rafters and I'm going to get those up and then I'll do all my framing for my uh, metal and then I'm going to pour concrete right here. I'm going to pour uh, just a 12 by 18 slab here to put all my hay on. The rest will be gravel for my equipment. And let's see what else we got going here. The sheathing, I'm going to hold off on that because it's about up to about 52 bucks a sheet right now. So I'm going to see if it goes down. I kind of got nailed on this barn. I called my buyer up in Seattle and was complaining when it was up to 20 bucks a sheet. I ended up paying like 40 some dollars a sheet for it because I couldn't wait any longer. So you live and learn, I guess. But I, hopefully I've got, I've got a few months to get this done. So hopefully that sheathing will come down a little bit. I've got more projects going, more, uh, I've got a woodshed to build, another overhang in the back of the garage. So I'll probably get a couple of slings of uh, OSB. And then uh, I'll come in, once I get this thing framed up, I'll, uh, I'll do another short video on how I'm, I'm gonna hurricane proof the, this end over here. Obviously that end up there will get hangered. And then this end here, a guy normally goes with H1s or H2 and a halfs. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use lags on this because I have a bunch so I'm just going to use them up on that and I'll do a video on that show you how I do that all right thanks guys I I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you got any comments or questions or just let me know and uh, I'll get back to you thanks a lot